All right, we're going to move on to reassembly. I've got this thing wiped down to my satisfaction. Um, pretty straightforward process. We've got our L-shaped uh, axis pin retaining uh, wire that we're going to put back in in lieu of the other one. We're just going to set it in the left side of the receiver with the coiled end where the end of the actual safety is going to go through. All right, That makes it a very solid arrangement that keeps your axis pins from walking in and out and uh, all that good stuff. All right, some people do this differently. Everybody has a different method of doing it. But for me, I'll go ahead and put my, to put it back together, put my hammer in, get it generally lined up with the hole for the axis pin. I'm going to get that front axis pin in through the trigger. I'm going to get it all the way through the receiver because there's nothing else that needs to go in other than the trigger itself. All right, there's our front axis pin. The hammer's back in place. We're going to take the L-shaped retainer, and this is going to be incredibly difficult for me to film, so you're just going to have to take my word on it. If you're confident enough to take apart the fire control group on your AK, you should know exactly what I'm talking about. You're going to take your, um, your actual pick, and you're going to pull the spring over just a little bit, and you'll see a little tab in the axis pin. You want to lay the L-shaped retainer actually in that little groove because that, that's what's going to hold it together. All right? And just taking sort of, that's what I use the flat nose punch for mainly, is I get in there and I just push that pin in until it falls down in place with the axis pin because that's what's going to hold, hold this whole thing together is basically this this wire. You might have to push on the axis pin to keep it in place. Okay, hopefully you can see this, but this trigger mechanism, when you're not using the TAPCO, can be just a little bit of a pain. The L-shaped retaining wire is over the front axis pin, so that means that this rear axis pin needs to go under the wire. Now you can have the arrangement either way, whatever's easier, but I found that it's easier to compress this rear uh, the rear one is a lot easier to compress and actually get the axis pin under it. So we're going to take the flat nose punch, compress the wire retainer just enough to where we can get the axis pin to go over the top of it like so. And from there we're going to take our thumb and compress, compress this guy. But you may want to start the actual trigger first like this. You know, like I said, this is an eight-handed operation. Push down and just sort of wiggle everything until you find a, you'll find a where it all goes. You just have to sort of visualize it. All right, there's that. All right, and we're going to have to pull back on this just a little bit to get it to go where we want it. One of the things that kind of stinks about not using the TAPCO trigger mechanism is the way that I just had to put all that back in there. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take our flat nose punch and compress this wire retainer just a little bit so that it pops under the actual groove in the axis pin itself. So I'm going to do that now. I know you're going to have a little bit of difficulty seeing this. I'm trying to narrate and you do eight-handed operations at the same time. We're going to basically slide the wire retainer out of the way just a little bit with our flat nose punch, okay? Just a little bit. All right, and we're going to actually get that axis pin. We want it, yeah, there we go, all the way in. All right, so both of our axis pins are actually seated all the way in. And from what I can see, the front axis pin has the retainer in there, which is not as huge of a deal just yet. We can fix that in a moment. So we're going to take our flat nose punch and we're actually going to compress. We're going to hold the axis pin in place, compress it, and we're just going to pop it under there, just like that. And our groove 
for the safety, see there how I put the pin through there, the punch? It's in the right spot. So now we can actually take our hook scribe, have a look at the forward trigger mechanism, and I can see that the spring itself, or the, the clip retainer, is under enough pressure. It's down in the groove that it's not going anywhere. And the nice thing about the Tapco retaining clip, too, is that it's long enough to where it's not going to slide in and out from recoil and make your axis pins walk out, like the other one has the potential to. All right, we're going to replace the safety. Go ahead and get it in place because that's going to actually hold that whole arrangement in place, which is a nice thing. Now, the reason we're putting the safety in now before we're messing with the actual, um, with any other fire control mechanisms like the hammer, the springs and all, is because we want to be able to move this forward to get the safety in. All right, I got the safety in. It might be under just a little bit of pressure, spring pressure. You're just going to have to kind of play with it like I'm doing here. All right, get that in place. Rotate it down. Okay, from here. We're going to go ahead and rotate our hammer back just a little bit. And we're going to undo our little scrunchie. If you are going to take your wife's uh, hair scrunchie, just don't tell her. When she gets it back and it smells like ballistol, that's not an easy thing to explain. You know what I mean? All right, so we got that off. From here, we're going to take this wire, <clears throat> fold it down. All right, the other wire, fold it down, put those back in place. Uh, hopefully you can see right there where I put those two back in place, all right? And then you're going to do a functions test. Push the hammer down until it locks. All right, everything looks good there on the fire control mechanism. Our uh, TAPCO uh, retaining clip seems to have done its job. If you're not quite confident that they're held in place, all you have to do is take a punch and just give the axis pins a little bit of a wallop from the other side. If they walk out, then you know you need to have another look at it. But they should be held firmly in place. Go ahead and push the hammer down until it locks. Test your safety. All right. Safety works. All right. There's the fire control mechanism. From here, we'll go to standard reassembly. Okay, we have the fire control mechanism for our AK back together. From this point, it's going to be, for the most part, standard reassembly. All right, we're going to start from the front of the rifle and work our way back. We're going to replace our fore end. I'm going to try to kind of play with the lighting here to get it just right. All right, stock goes in place. Take your little retaining flange or nut here. You might want to take, uh, sometimes what I do is I just take a little rubber mallet, give it a little tap rearward. Sometimes that can be a little bit of a pain, just depending on how loose the gun is and how many times you've had it apart. Give that a little tap, and at the same time, you might want to just give the, um, the actual arm itself a little tap. I mean, if you're using a non marring hammer, it's not a big deal. All right, and this is the way I gunsmith AKs. I don't have a single problem. All right, Let's just beat that back in place. All right, four ends on there, real nice. Go ahead and replace your cleaning rod. Okay. Like so. All right, the gas tube line up. Just do similar as an SKS, okay? Just line it up flat. You see the uh, orientation of the actual lever itself. All right. Place the gas piston. Push down on this lever until it locks into that flange on the receiver right there. Got to have some strong dang fingers to do it. Rub rubber mallets help working on these, okay? All right, so working our way backwards, next thing we're going to replace is going to be the bolt carrier. The bolt itself, you can remove the extractor. It's not incredibly difficult, but if you don't have to remove the extractor, I really wouldn't worry about it. All right. Hopefully you're going to be able to see this. Just the bolt in. So it goes all the way to the rear, give it a rotate, and it'll just kind of rotate into place. Okay, so I'm sure most of you are familiar with, with the next steps. We're going to put the bolt carrier and bolt back in. You saw where I put, put the bolt in. You're going to have to push down just a little bit, like that, all the way forward. 
All right, take your recoil guide rod assembly, recoil spring and guide rod assembly. I'm going to show you two different ways to put the dust cover on. The machinery cover goes back on, line it up in the notch right there behind the, uh, the sight, push down, give it a smack, replace magazine, and you've got an AK that's back together. Alright, your AK is back together. Now, you saw the functions test. I'm going to show you a way to get the dust cover on. If you're having difficulty getting the dust cover on, I'll show you a little trick here. Take the actual uh, flange back here on the back of the receiver and just take the little arm right there that locks into it and instead of pushing it all the way down into the ridge itself just kind of put it on there like that. Hopefully you can see that. See how I have that on there? If you're having difficulty, put it on there like that, but be careful, it will fly out and hit you in the dang face. Lay the dust cover on there like so. Hold it down nice and tight, and then just pull the charging handle to the rear. Alright. It pops right out, okay? And that didn't require a whole lot of effort at all, okay? But there's your AK-47. Hopefully you gleaned some knowledge. Um, I know that the camera angles, some of them were kind of odd and probably hard to see, but hopefully that pointed you in the right direction. And uh, you can maintain your Kalashnikov, and maybe you learned a little bit about your fire control mechanism that you didn't know, and there she is. Get in there. Some of these guns are a little easier to take apart than others. Get one of these that's been apart several times, and man, you can just fly getting one of these little bad boys apart. Very easy gun to work on.